you do it then? You may I pull the trigger, end my life. You shot him. He was asking for it. You can't say that. No, he was literally asking for it. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose he was. Why have you got a gun anyway? I'm constitutionally permitted to bear arms for the purposes of shooting in the face anyone whom I consider to be asking for it. God bless Terror Alpha. And that, people of the internet, was satire. If I go, there will be trouble. If I stay, it will be double. Welcome to Time Ram, the podcast thing where we mash up an incorrect Doctor with an incorrect Doctor Who story and give ourselves brain ache, basically. My name is Rupert Booth, and I am here, as always, with my co-hosts and co-devisors of this whatever the hell it is, um, Mr. Barry Williams. Hello. And Mr. Paul Ferry. Hello. And today, it's a very special episode because we're doing another special guest one. Listener, oh, we know who you are now, listener. Hello, listener, how are you? You're looking radiant. <laughs> radiant. How can I see you, you're asking? Magic. That's how. I don't know why I'm talking to the camera, you can't see me. Um, <laughs> is it weird that I can see? Yes. Um, but, but yes, sorry, to get back to the point. Today, we have a special guest with us, Melanie Clark. Hello. Hello, Melanie, how are you today? Hello. I'm good, thanks. Excellent. I'm melting. Yeah, we're all milk. It's yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, international it's really streamer and Doctor Who fan, um, who 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 impressed me when we met by knowing what a macro was. Uh, I thought, ah, I will. Talk I'm doing about claws. You can't. I, claws. I'm, I'm I'm clipping my nails. You, we, we you do, can't we, see we me. We do I'm claws when we meet up on, on the very <laughs> infrequent times we meet up. We do claws at each other. It doesn't look mental at all. Um, <laughs> so, Melanie, thanks very much for coming along, even after you've listened to a previous episode, which is brave and possibly stupid. <laughs> and today we've got the extraordinary collision of Peter Capaldi in The Happiness Patrol. I think oh. we'd all agree that The Happiness Patrol is quite a divisive story, yes? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Well, what do we all think? What's, our, what's the general opinion of the, the Happiness Patrol as it stands in the McCoy era? I think it's got a good script but it is badly let down by the production players. I mean, we talked when we did Nightmare of Eden, how cheap that looks, and it just mm. looks terrible. This mm. looks worse. I think, I think it's yeah. worse. It does yeah. look worse. It does, I, I think yeah. so. I had to admit, when you told me it was going to be a McCoy story, I don't spend as much time on McCoy as I should do, mainly because I have a very large aversion to Bonnie Langford. <laughs> so I was... <laughs> why, I was why is that, Melanie? It's just really upset because you're upsetting because you know like that there's an actual companion called Mel and yeah. you think I can uh, actually be drawn to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, I harbour a dislike of Bonnie Langford from Bugsy Malone, which has never left me. <laughs> um, so I genuinely can't watch her in anything. So um, I was really, really relieved when I saw this was an ace story. I was like, it, yes. It is. Yeah. Um, and I vaguely uh, remember watching this uh, probably when I was very little. And then also um, when I... All the way all our faces fell at beginning. that point. <laughs> well, what, 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 what year are we talking? 1988, I was five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, I was we're five. All, we're I probably all. saw a repeat, oh. to be honest. Um, <laughs> but genuinely, um, I enjoyed it. I have yeah. to say, like, it is obviously very... Um, low production values mm. i agree with that 100 mm. but otherwise i was thought you know what this cast isn't bad quite impressed yeah the script is decent yeah and i actually genuinely enjoyed it which i didn't think i was going to i found i enjoyed it more on this watching than i ever have in the past including on first transmission now bear in mind we were all yeah. pretentious and elaborate teenagers by this point <laughs> um and it was it was sometimes difficult to to support doctor who in the late 80s um <laughs> But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely echo all this. You know, it's a really good cast, actually. It's a really good cast. And none of them do anything wrong. 
Um, yeah. And the script is good. It's, it's got some really inventive ideas in it. it, it it's an inventive idea overall, I think. But my Christ, it looks cheap. And all right, you know, yeah. classic Doctor Who frequently looks cheap, but kind of not that cheap. I think a lot of the designers are misfire as well. I mean, it, yeah. it just... I, I have words about yeah. design waiting. <laughs> words. Words. Oh, yeah, they're not pleasant words. They're not nice. Long words. words. <laughs> they're not, not that necessary. long. No, no, they're not very long. Four letter words. They're dead to the point. Um, there's kind of one word, really. Uh, there are four letters to it. Begin with an S and end in a T. Might do. All right, okay. Um, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blink. Don't even blink. Blink and you're dead. The story opens in a darkened studio. It's meant to be an alien city on the planet of Terra Alpha, uh, which appears to be some kind of colony planet. Hello. Yes. My, my first point, they do mm-hmm. turn the lights down in these scenes. Yeah, scenes. yeah it's, it's very um, flat, but yeah, they do. Trouble they, is, they, that's it. It's not modelled. And, and the one inch tape and the cameras they had at that point, they really didn't, you know, you needed, you, you couldn't be that subtle with the lighting. They needed yeah. a bit more... Ba-ba-boom. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just here sticking to the sofa. It is horrendous. But, uh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's horrendous that you're sticking to the sofa. Yeah. That is horrendous. Yeah. Yeah. If only you were here between me and the sofa, it'd be all right. But no. Oh. <laughs> Very different podcast than I was asking. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Melanie. I'm terribly sorry. I, I bring a guest and, and immediately yeah, we're yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> and these two, I try and keep them under control. <laughs> so yeah, we're happiness patrol. We've got yes. um Silas P uh is there on a bench and uh he basically he's uh, arresting a woman who is a killjoy. Uh she's there feeling a bit sad. So mm. she gets arrested yeah. and killed, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, because he's a secret member of the happiness patrol. Mm-hmm. And the next thing, the doctor arrives with a end companion. Mm. Which we probably so, need to work out. Yeah, here's our first thing. You know, mm. So it's Capaldi. So it's we've Capaldi. got a choice of Clara or Bill and Nardo. Yeah. Mm. Or just Bill. Are there some that are just Bill without Nardo? Well, there's one that's just mm. Nardo. I mean, you know, you could mm. one that's just Nardo. Yeah. Or just Nardo. Yeah. So um, as Melanie's the guest, I think it's right and proper that we give her the <laughs> You bastard. The pressure! <laughs> um, well, when you said it was going to be Peter Capaldi, I immediately gravitated to Bill. Mm. But I kind of think it would be a little bit more comedic if it was Nardole, just because... It did occur to me. Yeah. yeah. It, you could do it in a Christmas special and, you know, it becomes the Jollity Patrol. It's <laughs> kind of... <laughs> the Jollity Patrol. <laughs> You're not being Christmassy enough. We're going to kill you. <laughs> I would not survive the Jolly Patrol without me. Yeah. Where's your tinsel? Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> malicious. Tinsel is malicious and loads of worlds collide suddenly. Um, I mean, we already established in an early episode of Time Around that Capaldi hates Christmas. Does <laughs> <laughs> he turn up to just... Because one thing I noticed about this, so the Doctor kind of, you know, they turn up, the Doctor saying, I've heard disturbing things. I, where? Where's he heard it? Does he listen to the wires? Yeah. And then I thought, oh, it's the Reddit. time of nine o'clock news. Because <laughs> we know they do that from the Deadly Assassin. Runcible presents it. Runcible's <laughs> going, now ah, there's weird shit going on in Terra Alpha. And Doctor goes, hmm, maybe I'll go and investigate that. Maybe he's still got the Time Space Visualizer. Yeah. Have you seen this the... just massive thing with a tiny screen on it that he watches all his television. <laughs> Have you seen the recent video um, by the Dalek... 6388 people about the time space visualizer and what an incredible <laughs> invasion of privacy problem it is. As it, as it, it tune into any moment in history and watch it. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Voyeuristic. <laughs> yeah. And you trust William Hartnell with this device? <laughs> or I do. I'm not sure I do. You know, he makes sure he and Barbara get home safe, does he? And then what? Does he, does he kind of keep making sure they're home safe? And, <laughs> you know, tuning in. it's kind of, yeah, terrifying. Yeah. Um, I would like to build one though. I mean, not a real functioning one, so it could be <laughs> weird like that. I mean, a, a, a copy of the prop. Because that's, that's odd... red flag number two for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to know now. What was number one? Uh, the sitting in between you and the sofa. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so that's me and Baz down, Paul. It's over to you. Yeah. <laughs> Go. You must, you, must, you must save time round. <laughs> You must be the nice oh, one, Paul. Yeah. Well, the Creesite Adderall. On previous evidence of uh, previous shows, that's probably not going to happen. Go ahead, time round. Okay, so Doctor and Nardole 
um, arrive oh, on excellent. Terra Alpha, an Earth colony. Yes. This is um, better. I'm announcing it now. Our version is going to be better. Yes. I mean, I, before we get much further, I mean, obviously, I think if they were making it in the Cabaldi era, they'd be doing a lot of this on location, you know. That's oh, I thought mm, yeah. it would be on location. I mean, there might even, you know, the original idea that was mooted in the production office in the 80s was still in Port Marion. Which would look yeah. great. Port Marion at night. night. Which yeah. would look great. Well, if it was at night, it wouldn't scream the prisoner either. I think, I think mm. any, whenever I watch Mask of Man Dragger, I can't help expecting Magoon to come round a corner yes. and start punching Tom Baker. Um, <laughs> or something, you know, because it's so much the village. Just imagining Patrick Magoon just... Staying in Port Marion all the time, ready to punch Tom Baker at any opportunity. What's his problem with Tom Baker? <laughs> I mean, you need to know what's going on here. <laughs> Did he just not like the fourth doctor? Yeah, he thinks he's too sexy. The incorrect I number. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, in the Capulgia, it's going to look actually like maybe a town, which would be nice. Yeah. yeah. And they meet Terra Sigma. Who's taking a census? Played by John Norrington. Mm. Yeah, which confused I, me because he's just Morgus at this point. Yeah, but, I remember mm-hmm. at the time kind of thinking, oh, you know, it's such a come down from Morgus. <laughs> it's not his fault, you know. It's work for him as an actor, <laughs> but uh, I remember thinking, oh, it's not Morgus. Think, is I, it? I think with John Norrington, because of the case of Androzani and because he's so yeah. stuck in it, fans kind of give him star status. Yeah, mm-hmm. dropping actor. Yeah, you know, he's only in about five scenes. It's weird, it's just tiny, yeah. Little yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, do we know who cast him? I wonder if JT kind of went, Let's get someone from the case of Andrezani back. That's that story that was almost as good as the twin dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any thoughts on who's playing uh Trevor Sigma in the Capaldi version? Or we're notoriously bad at choosing actors for recent stories, aren't we? Yeah, probably... I think he would probably be a comedian, I think, because it's ostensibly a comedy part. I think mm. it would probably be. Ardor Hanlon or someone, maybe. Yeah, that like, could he's work. a bit of uncular. That could work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually, yeah. Let's make it Ardor. Yeah. He could probably do the officious thing quite well. You know, you just mm. can't get through to him because, well, no, it's not on the forms. Mm. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I like that. Okay, that's a good start. Cool. Nice All right, so they don't talk to him for very long. The next time we see them, they're going back to the TARDIS, uh, which is being painted <sighs> pink by the Happiness Patrol. Mm-hmm. And they almost immediately get arrested. Yeah. Something that had never occurred to me before watching it, watching it this time, was thinking, they see this TARDIS, which is this blue colour, it's quite dark, so they paint it pink. He's thinking, what about all the fucking walls <laughs> all over the place? Yeah, it's really dreary, paint those. Kind of grey, and yeah. yeah, the pink, white pink on the TARDIS. So it's, a good, it's actually the most interestingly coloured thing already in that scene. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly apart from Celeste McCoy and his comedy waistcoat, uh, jumper, rather. Yeah. Some of the walls, are, I don't know if you noticed, have got these weird pictures of these faces on them, these kind of scary faces. I mean, and you're thinking, you're not trying to be very let's, jolly. Yeah, I mean, let's let's talk jolly. about the design then. I mean, you know, it, we seem to generally agree that the design lets it down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, going over to the costumes as well, I don't think the costumes look great. I mean, I understand what they're going for, but... I don't. It kind of looked tacky to me. Well, the whole sort of Butlins thing, I think, you know, the whole kind of false yeah. quality. Well, well, it's well, the, it's the I, happiness patrol for me. I, I don't get the. I read a thing that said in the original script they were supposed to be like cheerleaders. They were supposed to be like mm. sort of young, young women. And somewhere mm. along the line, it ended up as kind of middle-aged women in these just odd outfits, these yeah. strange raincoats and pink wigs, and it's just. Well, it, it's, it's, it's potentially interesting that they've cast older, though, isn't it? They sort of, you know, yeah. they, they're meant to be sort of jolly and all that. But, Especially um, when those costumes are very short. Very like short. It, feel, yeah. it, feel, it feels very Star Trek original series. It it's does. Like, good God, it I does. can see your cheeks. But, but without <laughs> the, being in the 60s. Mm. Yeah. And, and as, as you quite rightly point out, yeah, the sets, the Terra Alpha is extremely drab, and it shouldn't be. It should be kind of like Paul Mary, it should be kind of pastel colored and happy, they're painted. Yeah. Um, and vacuous, with that same kind of, you know, jolly vacuousness that you get in the village in the prisoner. Where they yeah. kind of do that much more effectively with the multi colored cloaks and things like that and the weird glasses. It's actually, mm. you know, kind of that to me works a lot better, said a man who writes books about the prison and might be biased. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, and it's not surely a case that they didn't have the money to do costumes like that. I can't see how it would cost any more or less. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. tacky. It just seems tacky. And I remember at the time that turned people off, that turned the general public off. But yeah. Look, yeah. They're not going to bother with a bit of good script or not, or if it's full of good actors, this is going to go to and turn over. Yeah. yeah. 
So I should probably introduce the Happiness Patrol. Uh, they're led by Daisy K. And a mirror. <laughs> Australian with a mirror. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Get it out of the way early. I know, right, I know you, you were expecting me to wait until, until uh, Helen A, weren't you? But no. So oh, you, you, uh, right, ah, right. Okay. You see? Uh, yeah. Tricky and strange. <laughs> and then they're locked in the waiting area. Uh, which yeah. apparently was improvised at the last minute. They didn't have enough money for a set. <laughs> That's a surprise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was, so, it all the, was it all the Daleks that blew up in remembrance? Is it kind of like, yeah, we've got it. Yeah, we'll do this for nothing. Yeah, we, um, we need uh, we need to cut a set from this story. You've got to lose the prison set. Yeah. We can afford to paint a line on the floor. That's all you got. So uh, yeah, they get they get locked up in the in the waiting area uh, with Priscilla P, who's there just standing around with her. A tray, I think. She's got a tray of drinks and a, and a big yeah. gun. Like, like, like um, uh, an usherette in cinemas back in yeah. the yeah. 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 20th century. Yeah, um, but, but a psycho. Yeah, it's, all, a it's psycho. established later on that she's completely psychotic. I, I, yeah, there, was, there were some weird usherettes in the Odeon in yeah. Newcastle. I mean, you know, some of them were psychotic, <laughs> believe me. Middle of the battle started back to get, do you want an ice cream? I don't, oh, I don't know. <laughs> You get the sense she's probably meant to be terrifying, which, you know, no offence to the actress, but it's difficult to be terrifying in that outfit. Mm. This, this is my problem with the happiness patrol it's the happiness patrol themselves because mm. i think they should be scary mm. but unless you've got a particular aversion to middle-aged women in age inappropriate clothes <laughs> they're kind of not i've i've got a really weird thing to niggle about when mm-hmm. it comes to the happiness patrol mm-hmm. and that's because in terms of their costuming obviously they all wear the silly little max and the pink hair mm. and with the the male characters they're usually in that kind of salmony pink almost like a chef's top which is a yeah. bit bizarre mm. but what i noticed on priscilla p is she has a painted face on not literally like uh, like as in like she has makeup mm-hmm. there is a line around the side of her face ah. where they literally like yeah. painted on and it's really obvious Mm -hmm. And when you see, um, like, Sheila Hancock as Helen A, Mm -hmm. she's got the same makeup, but it's not as obvious. It's like they forgot to blend, Uh like, Rachel Bell's, like, Priscilla P's all the way Uh around. But if anything, it makes it more slightly sinister Mm -hmm. that they're kind of hiding their true selves behind this kind of, like, makeup facade. But it's not carried through sufficiently around the other of members of the happiness patrol throughout the episode so it feels a bit lost and it could have worked really well i i'd never noticed that before that's a fascinating point it could have worked really well because you've got all the uh, the killjoys who wear the, the sort of drone masks later on mm. you know the, the, the gray masks if you, you, know, you could offset that with, with the face painting being a very obvious on all of them mm. standardized and it gives it that weird clown thing as well yeah they got the clown yeah. face yeah 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 i did notice that because it reminded me a bit of um the blue meanies and yellow submarine you know the way they have the slightly sort of mask like yeah. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it reminded me of that a little bit i mean even if they put, if they put masks on you know even half masks that would have been great for the happiness patrol something really quite disturbing something like, something like that a clockwork orange you know mm-hmm. yeah. or if they've done them kind of like clockwork orange you know so with the, you know they've got batons and they're gonna can have you can i say my idea which i had which for the happiness patrol what happens if someone says no I want it. I We've want got it. one idea. <laughs> oh. It'd be pointless to say no then, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, I just thought I was thinking about the, about the idea of kind of enforced jollity in the sort of 21st century. And it made me think of uh, children's TV presenters mm. um, and how they're kind of very peppy and enthusiastic. And it's all, come on, kids, eat some vegetables, come with me. And it's all this sort of thing. And I thought they should maybe be like that, that kind of ramming happiness down your throat type mm. thing mm. and i thought mm. maybe this should be like really your in your face tv basically. presenters with big white teeth and like perfectly quaffed hair like yeah. really yeah. aggressive butlins workers yeah. yeah you're gonna do this today yeah. and you'll be just like wow no no like- yeah and how this could work with capaldi is you could give it a, a kind of logan's run spin where it's quite a sort of aggressively youth-led society who are a bit oh. kind of, oh, when you're a bit older, you're not as happy, you're not as fun. Nice. Um, so into this comes Capaldi, who's the very epitome of grumpy old bastard. <sighs> you know, so they hate him. So speaking about Capaldi, uh, he's going to be magnificent in this. I think he's yeah. absolutely going to sell the script. He's going to go for the nuance. It, I think it's going to be, I actually think it's going to be really good, this story, with the Capaldi yeah. era, with those production values as well. 
Um, I, I really do think it's the production values that they're happy to control down more than anything else. Yeah. More so than most classic Doctor Who. You know, it doesn't have to be this way. You blew one too many Daleks up in remembrance, didn't you, JNT? You got, you got, <laughs> you let yourself go. You lost the whole prison. You know, we're it, just here yeah, with a line. You on lost the, the whole this prison. We've got, we've got a bit of tape on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> and the woman with a badly aligned face makeup, you know. Mm. <laughs> and the Could freak machine from the BBC pub, I'm assuming. And the <laughs> Where did they get that from? And, and let's face it, we're going to get onto the go kart in a minute. So, um... <laughs> did, did anybody else think any of the sets looked like they might be rehashed from? Paradise Towers. I thought particularly the sort of bridge mm. going think, there's a bridge going across at one point. It looks like the bridge that goes across the It's Paradise a similar Towers. vibe to Paradise Towers, isn't it? Where they yeah. got they find this society and they break it, you know. Mm. But uh, yeah. I, I kind of feel it maybe they thought, oh well this tower block works, maybe we can do an entire town. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. obviously yeah. not. Yeah. I can't one of the things I can't get is why I didn't just put some leaves and stuff on the floor. It's such a yeah. studio floor. Studio floor. Not even any paint. You, know, you could have painted it even to make it plaquestones or something, and it would have helped. Yeah, it's, it's all just really studio floor. Yeah, very studio floory. Yeah, and no one likes a studio floor. Even the manholes don't look manholy. No, no, no. That, no. I mean, that's a strange sentence. I never thought I'd say, but you, you know what I mean. They don't look. I'm real. processing it. I'm yeah. Processing it. Um, <laughs> And they're all on big sort of wooden blocks, so you can tell mm. that, you know, it's just, they've, they've had to raise it up, and it's just mm. it's bizarre. Yeah. You can see the paint strokes and all the backdrops, it's just... It does, it, it looks a bit mm. webcomers. You know, mm. it, it looks a bit Hartnell era, yeah. but without being on 405 line black and white television. Okay, so they're in the waiting area. Yeah. And they meet uh, Harold V. They're behind a bit of, of, of colour. They're behind their tape. Yeah. They meet <laughs> yeah. Harold V. Lovely. Um, who's uh, he used to be Helen A's gag writer. Mm. Yeah. But uh, don't get too fond of him because he's not around for long. <laughs> yeah, I do kind of find him pointless. Mm. He's there to right. expose it. You could get that from mm. Priscilla. Yeah. yeah, and it might be more interesting to get it from Priscilla. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Only yeah. the only thing I can think about with him is um, Harold. Is it Harold? Yeah, Harold. Yeah. Um, Harold, Harold P. Is it's it's kind of foreshadowing that even the most loyal or the most needed member of the Happiness Patrol is utterly dispensable. Mm. That's the only thing yeah. I can think that role serves because it's like blink and you miss it and he's gone. If you're going yeah. to make a cup mm. of tea, you don't even yeah. see that person. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, am I being incredibly dim in only just suddenly realizing that Harold P is named after Pinter? Harold V. Oh, really? Oh. Oh. Harold Pinter. And he's a writer in the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't he? He's a gag, well, a gag writer, but you know. Yeah. He's a... Harold V. I, Harold Pinter's known for his gags, yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, hilarious. well, yeah, but you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> it's just suddenly occurred to me. It might be. Harold V. You've got you've got others that are obviously named after people like Priscilla P and Susie Q, you know. Does anyone look? Oh, Susie Q. Oh, okay, yeah. Bloody hell. Is that going to be like, well, that's going to be Susie Quattro, isn't it? Susie Quattro. going to be Priscilla Presley. Yeah. 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 You're going to do this all the people. Who's Daisy K then? I don't oh, know. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, we've, hey. gone, we've gone on a tangent, but I'm intrigued now. Yes, I'm on. Yeah. Oh, we go on tangent. Tangent to fine. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Tangent to how we fill a three episode story. Um, <laughs> Daisy K. Daisy who, puts in, who comes up on Google if I put on Daisy K? I don't know. I'm going to try it. Who do you think it is, listener? Let, let's get interactive. Yeah. Ask the listener yes. a question now, and in about six weeks' time, we we'll release this. We'll get an answer. <laughs> It'll be great, man. Maybe there's a margarine called something like Daisy K. It sounds like it should be the margarine in the late yeah. 80s. Mm. Use Daisy K. It's high poly of saturates. Or a makeup brand. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe that's what, what, what the name has got on. Maybe they're all wearing Daisy K. Mm. Because they're worth yeah. it. <laughs> something. Not worth much. <laughs> maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Daisy K. <laughs> yeah. Possibly. Ah, uh, this is why they can't afford decent costumes because Daisy K is a really expensive but market brand mm. on Terra Alpha. So good, excellent. Well, there we are. Ooh, this yeah. is learned a Doctor Who fact. Might not be a fact. <laughs> it, might, it might be complete bollocks. I love I love the thing about them being named after I never thought of that though. Yeah. Does anyone know Graham Curry? Can we ask Graham Curry? 
He's dead, isn't he? Oh. I think so, yeah, yeah. You probably could ask Andrew Cartmel. He might be able to help out. Andrew Cartmel, not dead. Um, <laughs> Good. Probably not. <no. laughs> I That's really hope we don't have to end this one with an announcement category. Unfortunately, <laughs> Andrew Cartmel passed away. Um, <laughs> can't be bad. Oh, well, I can get to Andrew Cartmel. I can get to Andrew Cartmel. Don't kill him. I'm not going to kill him. I'm going to ask him. Is that <laughs> hell? Not till I've got the way the you said it is like, I can get. Oh, no, no. no. As in, like, I, I know people. It's my inner Gedeon coming out. Um, <laughs> Got him yeah. on this feed here, this camera feed. I could just see. <laughs> oh, he's eating some dinner. Said, yeah, I said I could see this, and I said it was weird. Maybe I could see Andrew Carmel as well. <laughs> Maybe I've got a time space visualizer. But you were the one who did that buzz by getting the lift with people. Ah, well, yeah. yeah. This is the the convention story. I was at a convention in Manchester, <laughs> and I, I think we were leaving. We were, we were all staying in one yeah. room, so mm-hmm. I was sleeping on the floor on some some blankets and some pillows. And we got in the lift to leave this convention and John Pertwee got in the lift mm-hmm. and he turned to me and he said, oh, you're like Lazarus, are you? You carry your own bed. And I kind of went, uh, yeah. <laughs> John Pertwee. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then he, he literally died just a few weeks later. Um, yeah. So I've, I've had the blame ever since. We did blame um, you, that's right, yeah. <laughs> I've forgotten about that. It's good to be reminded. Just another of my awkward, awkward encounters with celebrities at conventions. I was with Puccini before he died. It was so sad. You have two hearts. So, so the thought occurs, if they actually did cut this largely spurious character, maybe they could have afforded the prison set. For, for <laughs> oh, are we still talking about that, are we? Right, yeah. Maybe some bars. I mean, a few bars can't have been that yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah. A bar, a bit of drain pipe paint and silver, I'd have gone with it. Yeah. I'd, I'd have yeah. suspended my disbelief. Yeah, um, better than a line, yeah. I did I did try to convince myself about the line being, you know, that sort of exercise in bureaucracy. Mm. We, a bit, we say that it's there, it isn't there, but we say this is a cell. So it's got to be a cell. It's a but bit that, Emperor's New Clothes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Andrew Carmel says they try to use it, you know, with the, with the lines about Terra Alpha has no prisons and stuff like that, right. you know, but it's, mm. it's it's not great. Capaldi would have a prison. He'd have a proper prison set. He'd have right. a prison. Yeah. He'd have yeah. a prison, yeah. 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 He, would, he wouldn't tolerate hazard tea. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be a hazard to him, he'd have it. <laughs> not an Andrew Carmel. hazard tea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> While this is going on, they're, they're going, we're cutting back and forth to Helen A, mm-hmm. and her husband is only Joseph C. I always wonder who B is, but he's uh, he's just Joseph C. And they're watching the, her own broadcast. Mm-hmm. Tells everyone how great it is. And immediately, mm-hmm. Sheila Hancock, superb as Helen A, just yeah. channeling Margaret Thatcher, totally obviously. Yeah, from, yeah. I, I watched the making of on, on the DVD when I watched it in prep for this. And I think it was Andrew Cartmel was saying, you know, Helen, Helen uh, Sheila Hancock didn't see it as a subtext. She picked up the script and went, this is Thatcher, isn't it? Right, leave it to me, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and just got straight in and just went for it, you know. And you can tell it when she's making a broadcast, you know, she's very much doing that slower, measured, yeah. Thatcher voice that always mm-hmm. seemed utterly inhuman. Mm. <laughs> But when she's not doing that, she, you know, she does bring it back a bit and, and, and makes Helen A a character, yeah. Yeah. So, who's Helen A in the Capone era, then? Mm-hmm. So, you've already used Helen Mirren, so... Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Uh, that indeed. would have been... Yeah. yeah. Judy Dench. Yeah. Judy Dench. Excellent. If we could afford a cell, <laughs> I, we could afford I, I do love a bit of Dame Judy. <laughs> Who doesn't? Actually, yeah. no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to override. Okay. Can I throw another Dame in, please? You can. Can mm-hmm. it be Dame Diana Rigg? Oh, because oh. yeah. I think she'd smash that. She would smash yeah. it. Yeah, she would smash yeah. it. Great, let's have that. Yeah, Great. excellent. And is she? I suppose yeah. is she still doing it as a kind of Thatcher satire? Probably not, because Thatcher isn't you know as relevant it's by the Capaldi kind era. of. It's nearly mm. uh, Theresa May era at this point, Theresa isn't it? May. It's Theresa yes. May. It's Theresa May so being elected. Kind of she might even be prime minister. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, dancing, <laughs> dancing Robot awkwardly. Thing. Running yeah. through fields of wheat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Oh, yeah, that's what she did when she was a kid. Man. <laughs> yeah, that was a big yeah. rebellion moment. Yeah. Yeah. One of, one of her <laughs> father's many, many fields of wheat that he owned. Mm. Um, <laughs> Are we being subliminally influenced by that picture of Diana Rigg that's uh, behind you there, Mel? I, I oh. bought myself that when um, Diana passed because I took it quite badly. This was I my, um, be, yeah. I'm going to hang you on my wall. Because nice. you're an absolute yeah. queen. Nice. Should be great in this. Yeah. Nothing to do with the podcast, but obviously, <laughs> usually when any of my my more retro heroes die, I uh, 
placate my morning by buying mm. something random. Mm. Um, <laughs> but when when Honor Blackman left mm. <laughs> left this earth, I treated myself to Honor Blackman's book of self defense. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 there. I, honestly, it's brilliant. Oh, wow, yeah, and and yeah. it's not Nambi Pambi. It's not Nambi Pambi at all. Wow. Like it's wow. brilliant. This will set you back <laughs> eighteen <laughs> shillings in nineteen sixty five. You know, that's a really impressive, to be serious for a moment, it's a really impressive thing that that exists in 1965 from a TV series. That's mm. really quite yeah. impressive. The, for, the foreword's yeah. brilliant about how, obviously, like, they, they melded and, and changed her character because mm-hmm. she needed to be more active and mm-hmm. having a gun in a garter didn't work and all this sort of thing. And, yeah, it's sweet. Anyway, that's a tangent that has nothing to do with Doctor Who. That's fine. <laughs> so, we, we we do do back to the episode. Fine. <laughs> the tangent is fine. And, and, and who's, um, who's, who's, who's Joseph? Uh, who's Joseph? Oh, yeah. Um, mm. I'm gonna need someone more age appropriate to mm. Diana in um, 1988. So that's gonna be in, where it's the... not 1988. We're about no, to 2016, yeah, yeah, 2016, uh, aren't we? Sorry, I'm going the wrong way around. Yeah. I was just um, thinking for a moment, would Patrick McNeer have been around? I don't think he would have been. No, I don't think he was. Mm. Yeah. No. Um, that would have been uh, you know, a great piece of stunt casting as well. Um, yeah. uh, Wingard, we still, well, we've had Wingard, haven't we? No, we've had Wingard, Wingard yeah. we can't, Well, not, not in, we haven't in, had Wingard. We can't keep but... bringing Peter Wingard out, can we? <laughs> I think it came out years ago. It wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't be right either. He needs to be that kind of... He plays it as very, you know, henpecked, to use that phrase. From yeah, the time, yeah. You know, yeah. henpecked. The henpecked husband. Yeah. But yes, dear, no, dear, three bags full, dear. Was, uh, was Peter Salas? Around. Peter Salis. Oh, when he was ancient. Oh, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I'm not sure he was. I'm not sure he was. Oh, wasn't he? Uh, I think. I think. I think Salis. Okay, he died in 2017, but I mean, he was like Oof. 97. Ooh. Yeah. Not nice. very mobile. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Possibly um, not. Then. I'm. I'm going down a last the summer wine tangent, and then I've just gone Bill Owen, but Bill Owen was definitely dead. So can yeah, we go Tom dead. Owen, which is his yeah. son? Yeah. 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 Looks a lot like Bill Owen. Yeah, yeah. he does. He does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In that way that Sean Pertwee is just slowly turning more and slowly more. Slowly yeah, into his dad. Isn't he? You know, if, he, if yeah. he's got a bouffant hair going on... I, he, I adore right. Sean Pertwee. I think he's a great actor. I'd love to see him as the Doctor. Oh, instead of Tom Owen, actually, no, this would be weird casting. Patrick Mower? Patrick Mower? Yeah, throwing that in. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Because <laughs> he just went Pertwee, my head went, who done it? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. my very earliest, my earliest memory of Pertwee is who done it. I, I, I was, yeah. alive, I was alive from being the Doctor, but I don't remember any of that. I remember from mm. Tom. But I kind of knew that Pertwee on Whodunit was a previous Doctor, and at that age, I was really confused by, well, Whodunit, that means it is Doctor Who, but it isn't. <laughs> I don't understand how do these things work, you know, and that was before Chris Chibnall even been thought of. What is actually going on here? Because I'm confused. Are you confused? Pretty confused. Proper confused. I thought Brian Murphy. Um, oh, oh, that is no, that is perfect. That's Win. all jo- George and Mildred esque. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. <sighs> oh. oh. No, that's brilliant. Diana no, no, no. Br- yeah. No, no. Yeah. There. Yeah. Brian, Brian Murphy. Murphy. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Brian Murphy and Diana Rigg. This is beautiful. This episode. This is, <laughs> this is a fantastic Doctor Who episode. Capaldi's not even having to do any work. <laughs> okay. Great. We also get to see Hearn's executioner, the Candyman. Right, the one bit right. design I think is really well done in this. I think mm-hmm. that's a great costume. Yeah. Um, it really looks good. It looks expensive. It, yeah. It's Sue Moore and Steve Mansfield again, who, who are just superb and still are still working on them. Steve Mansfield mm. the Sea Devils yeah. recently. I should tell the story about my partner who was, um, she's a bit younger than we are. So she was about nine when this came out, something like that. And uh, she was absolutely terrified of the Candyman. Absolutely scared yeah. it to bits. Do you um, mock her? You must mock her about that. Do you mock her? Well, naturally, yeah, yeah. Do you uh, say, I was scared of Sutek the fucking destroyer? Um, <laughs> or something like that, you know? I, mean, I think she was partly scared of him because he looked like Bertie Bassett. Mm. Yeah, um, there's the fear of something being so wholesome to then suddenly being something that can actually hurt you. The also thing. And then sorry. that year for for, uh, for Easter, they got a Bertie Bassett um, Easter egg, <laughs> which she refused to eat. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. That's childhood trauma. And she had to give it to her dad. He had to eat it for her and eat the sweets. She was terrified of Bertie Bassett from then on. And then this this Easter egg came with a Bertie Bassett mug, (laughs) which she refused to use. But then they never got rid of it. So it was just there looking at her. 
So, so a thing to do, which we'd never build a Candyman costume and just turn up and expect it to be a real stuff. <laughs> no. It'd be really bad, wouldn't it? That would be a terrible thing to do. <laughs> so I thought I'd share that with you. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's going to make permission. That's interesting, you know, because I... At the time, I hated the candy man. I thought it was ridiculous. I thought the whole story, but I was being a potential 16 year old who was going, No, Doctor yeah. Who should be serious and, and like it was back in the old days and all that sort of thing. So it's really nice to know that it was actually effective in that way. It was yeah. scary. It's a terrifying yeah. concept. Mm. Mm. I mean, what the hell? This, is, this, this was once a, a man who's kind of. Being... He's got a guy with him called Gilbert M. Yeah. I don't know whose name that comes from. I, th- I, think, I think he's That's sentient built-in. candy. He's yeah. sentient candy because he does mention at some point that he made him. Yeah. But that almost like the mind is his. I, candy got man's some kind of mind link, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. You need me and I need me or something this to say. Yeah. yeah. It's never really properly explained. Nothing wrong with that. I've got no problem with things not being fully explained. I assumed he was sort of robotic, but yeah, it's really weird because. Yeah. It's kind of like a Cyberman, but with sweets. There's a human mm. brain in there. There's a human yeah. remnant that was once this guy's friend mm. uh, or whatever, you know. But maybe there was a, he got an accidental yeah. overdose of sugar radiation, which permanently <laughs> altered his body chemistry. And now look at him. Um, which... uh, when, when he dies, spoilers, um, <laughs> nice. he looks kind of robotic, doesn't he? He's just yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Metal bits. Yeah. Mm. The little Sorry. skeleton that comes down the chute. Would yeah. we up be updating the candy man into some form of more era appropriate candy? Because I have to say, I don't mm. think Bertie Bassett is as recognizable mm. now mm. if you pop that in front of somebody oh, yeah. as it would have been in the 80s. Would and you? the only thing I can think of <laughs> is Percy Pigs <laughs> 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 from Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> he just awesome. had like a great big kind of lumbering <laughs> slightly <laughs> kind of like squishy because i mean what is a percy pig it's, it's not quite marshmallow is it it, it kind of has that kind of licorice all sort esque but there's more sponge to it <laughs> so i think the whole like plot device of like the lemonade getting stuck and stuff would still uh, work uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. with yeah. a percy pig mm-hmm. yeah. but it's just going to be a giant pig <laughs> <laughs> How about, how about we just have a massive Oreo that just rolls in and squashes people and then goes away again? Um, or, 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 call, or call in the caterpillar, the birthday cake. Yes. Hey, this, podca- <laughs> this podcast is not sponsored by Marks and Spencer's. No. Um, no. <laughs> At least three of us aren't. Um, <laughs> Other chocolate cakes are available. Our cho- other chocolate cupcakes are definitely yeah. available. One of those M&M people. Um, oh, yeah, those guys. Yeah. 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 Although yeah. that would be a re- horribly impractical costume for him. I mean, they'd be yeah. even more litigious, talking... really, wouldn't it? But yeah, well, something yeah. like that. He was talking about the squidgy the person. I, I suddenly remember Mr. Soft. Do you remember Mr. Soft from the advert? Uh, that yeah. used to scare the crap out of me when I was little. Soft. Why you tell me why the why world, world in which you're, you're living, living is so strange. strange? That wasn't reassuring. <laughs> the, you know, the lyrics were kind of, what? Why? <laughs> why is this, what, what? Oh... I'm not going to entertain Mr. Soft. He's not coming into my house. He never did. So, yeah, I, I suppose they would be updating it. I kind of like the idea of a, a massive group of this pig. Well, we got Barney yeah. Bears. Uh, be a Barney Bear. Barney Bear. Um, could be a Fred or Frog. <gasps> I like the People idea think they're from the 90s, but they, I just no, they're, 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 remember they're still around. Yeah, when yeah. I was a kid in the 70s. Yeah. 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 No, but they're, they're from you a lot earlier than people. Now. From people... Yeah think of them you yeah. could get you could go really meta and do that short-lived range of doctor who white chocolate from about 1979 it could be it could be a white <laughs> chocolate tom baker played by tom baker played by tom baker yeah <laughs> who would be totally out of control by this point and not giving a shit about the script just enjoying them you would be coming and going britain 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 you know be like that could be a lumbering peter davison easter egg with <laughs> the electric coming out of its crotch <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Doctor and, um, well, the Doctor and Nardole, in fact, mm. uh, escape from the waiting area at about two miles an hour. Are they on the go kart? There's, there's a little go kart which they kind I've of jump on the go kart. Again, the go kart. I'm thinking, why did you spend the money on that prop? Now, oh, probably in the script, it was an exciting chase scene. And if it's on a location, yeah. if it in the Capaldi yeah. era, it'll be an exciting chase scene. Mm. But this thing goes at point zero of a mile an hour. You could honestly outrun it by a, a brisk jog. 
There yeah. might as well be on a push along scooter, not one of the new electric ones. Just literally, like you put your leg down and you push. Nice. It's just yeah, like, how great, is this? Yeah. How is this supposed to make you run faster? Yeah. I mean, if we're updating it, maybe they're just randomly running away on segways. So like, segways. <laughs> <laughs> that Does that, doesn't that happen in a tenant episode? I'm sure there's one where they're all on segways. Yeah. Mm. It would be, be that. Yeah. 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 yeah, I can't there's remember what this, it is, but there is one. Yeah, this yeah. bloody cart that makes a hell of a racket doesn't appear to, in the plot, doesn't work properly. Even in the actual episode, it breaks down. Yeah, and <laughs> Ace is immediately recaptured. Yeah. And McCoy does some of his classic arse in the air acting, which he does. is uh, he, does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he likes to get in there as much yeah. as possible. He does seem to do that, he does like <laughs> sticking his arse in the air, just getting head down the thing and sticking his arse in the air. Capaldi's not no, doing that. Just do that. It, yeah. it's, it's, no. You know, you never yeah. see Pertwee doing that. On the, on <laughs> the bright side, you never see Pertwee doing that. Um, In the original story, Ace is taken back and meets Susan Q, who uh, they, they meant, well, she's meant to be auditioning for the Happiness Patrol, uh, but Susan Q sort of isn't very happy in the Happiness Patrol. She's not very happy. No. Yeah. no, she's not um, very patrol either. Yeah, she's just standing there. So uh, I guess oh, we've got with two things here. First, is Nardole doing this? And second, who's Susan Q? Yeah. Could be the same actress. I mean, Susie Q's Leslie, Leslie Dunlop. Dunlop, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so yeah, first yeah. first of all, I saw this and just started singing May to December in my head, which is not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my brain works in, in British sitcoms. It's just, yeah. Um, <laughs> but she's actually one of the younger looking mm-hmm. Happiness Patrol. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we're going to need someone who obviously is quite a bit younger than Diana Rigg at this time. Mm. You actually so... want someone like Billy Piper, not Billy Piper, obviously, mm. for obvious reasons. And we could nip a pop star esque, pop star esque, yeah, yeah, someone so... like that, yeah. Yeah. someone kind of young and peppy, but but but. Who was the girl from S Club Seven who was in? I was just about to say, you're just about to say Hannah Spirit. Hannah yes, Spirit, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Look at us. I... From Vague Primeval, I, yeah, which is Primeval. totally not Doctor Who. Vague idea yeah. occurred. It's cool. Yeah, got, you should be able to mm. play the melancholy. What about Amy Winehouse? I was going to go Lily Allen <laughs> when we were going. Lily Allen always good, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any of them are good. I like Hannah Spirit though. I like, I like uh, all of them. Well, uh, yeah. why not go with her? So uh, yeah, while this is going on, the Doctor meets Silas P, mm-hmm. who tries his old trick on him. Hey, I know some people who want to do a rebellion. Do you want to join? Mm-hmm. But the Doctor's rescued by Earl Sigma, as uh, a so mm. cool yeah. guy from another planet who plays the harmonica. I like Earl Sigma in the original. Yeah, he's but good. Yeah, he's. Odd that he just drifts in and out and turns up when he's needed. I yeah. sometimes wonder if that's a bit clumsy in terms of writing. Yeah, there are, there are some clumsy touches. It's kind right? of like, yeah. you know, the doctor needs Earl Sigma and Earl turns up and goes, hey, dark. And turn- he's just a bit ethereal, isn't he? He's just like, uh, yeah. yeah. He's there when they need music. He's he like drifts, a Greek he chorus. Drifts yeah. in and out. He is like a Greek chorus. There's one point um, where he just turns up and I, I I swear I didn't even know he's from coming in. So I just he's just there suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man of mystery. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, so who's he being played by? Mm. Um, He's doing kind of like a cod American accent. Mm. So ideally, someone who can do a decent American accent. <laughs> An American. <laughs> An American, maybe. Uh-huh. <laughs> we uh-huh. make breakthroughs in time, Ram. I tell you. Um, mm. uh, who do? Uh, I was thinking someone American. I don't know, Jaden Smith. He's a bit young, is he? Uh, I don't know any young Americans. Um, That's what you see. <laughs> <laughs> Will it stand up in court? <laughs> um, um, or even, or, okay, okay, we can widen it to a British actor that can do an American <laughs> accent. How about that? I mean, is, is he American in the original one because he plays the blues? Is that why he's American? Yeah, like I'm that, guessing yeah. so. So he can yeah. turn yeah. up and kind of do that, hey, Doc, yeah. you know, shtick. Who's that guy that's in the, um, the one with the flat people, the flatness one? Who's that guy? Riggsy. Famous. Guy plays Riggsy. Yeah, Riggsy. Yeah. Oh, I like oh, him. Yeah. Uh, or even Wade. Cast. Done. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. That is actually the cast, isn't it? No one else new turns up now. We always find that yeah. episode one takes forever because we're, casting a, we're still on episode one. Episodes, We've been here for hours. episodes two and three so, go yeah. much more quickly. Hopefully. Apart from the pipe people, but we don't need to cast. Oh, no. They're, they're just. The people. People. Yeah. I think they're spurious as well. I don't think it's Yeah, them. they are. They're not good. Yeah, they're not. You know. not cast Fifi yet. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Because <laughs> I, th- I think Helen can do a uh, can, can double up, Ms. Mirren. A bit of mocap. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they're like the way you get in the Helen Mirren thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a big feature in Time Rap. Let's hope she never, ever finds out. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually finally getting near the end of episode one in the original version. Um, the doctor persuades Earl to come with him to the candy kitchen where they get caught mm-hmm. by the candy man. Yes. Yes. Dials. yes. Earl doesn't need much persuading. Earl's up for anything. Earl's he, just, is. he is. He yeah. is. Because he knows he can just vanish out of it again. You know, if he's in yeah. danger, no, I'm not here anymore. Yeah, that's right. He just plays his oh. harmonica and he's gone. Earl go. yeah. Earl away. All the cliffhangers in the original are quite weak, I have to say. Yeah. Well, we yeah, can cut them. Like, there's there's not much this. jeopardy. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I mean, in Capaldi, but this is a one part, isn't it? This is it's a one part. Yeah. It's a very yeah, tight yeah, yeah. one part story. So, yeah. so we can get some spurious characters. We maybe even get rid of the pipe people completely. Yeah. And therefore, they're pipes. And if we get rid of the pipe, oh, no, we need the pipes. We need the pipes. We always need pipes. It's the cell. Yeah. I worry about the lack of a cell. I thought, you know, get rid of a pipe. We can have maybe a bit of a cell. We can have the bars. Yeah. We can have a cell. That's fine. Yeah. They escape again. The doctor welds the candy man to the floor with lemonade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. I thought that was inventive. I can see mm. the doing is, that. It's quite good. I like the, um, the dialogue science. between the candy man and Gilbert M. They're like an old married yeah. couple. Um, yeah. yeah. One thing I really like about Capaldi is when he kind of goes wild and wacky sometimes. He spends a lot, you know, he, he is quite frowny and, and dour and yeah. a lot of the time. But then you'll suddenly get those moments of complete, like his little dance in Flatline. When he thinks he's sorted yeah. out, you know, yeah. I think I, I think he'd be spiraling around his big coat, going right and, and grabbing this and grabbing that and yeah. squirty squirt squirt, yeah, with carbonated liquid. Yeah, have to be yeah. Clear about that. yeah, iron brew, iron brew, <laughs> iron brew. Iron Not that brew. I'm making Scottish generalisations there. <laughs> anybody this, this, is, this is this is the episode where we're selling food products. Apparently, so it's all <laughs> yeah, good. it's all good. Other carbonated beverages are available. Yeah. <laughs> and in episode one, okay, that's good. Yeah, well, we kind of got there. Yeah, well, we're probably into episode two now. Um, Ace has been captured again. So I guess it's Nardole has been captured again. Mm-hmm. He's back in the waiting area mm-hmm. with Priscilla. Um, Ace is not being treated fantastically. She it's quite she repetitive. Seems to do a lot of, she seems mm. to do a lot of... You know, the, the old accusation of Doctor Who, the, yeah, you run around corridors a bit and then you get captured again, and that's episode three. That happens a lot. Mm. It's kind of happening a lot in this. You can simplify that. I mean, she, yeah, she gets captured and she escapes again a mm. lot. And then, yeah. you know... Again, it's back to the same threat that she's going to have to audition for the Happens Patrol. Yeah. yeah. It comes and goes how they treat her character because they've made her a bit more mature in remembrance. Mm. And mm-hmm. then in this, she's back to being a kid very mm, much basically, again. Yeah, yeah, that's, mm. that's how she's And then yeah. Yeah. after that again, she goes back to being more mature. So yeah. it comes and, and goes. I'm not, I'm not sure how Nardo will be handling this because he has his moments of you know, exquisite hardness in, in the Capaldi's last story, in the cyber story. Yeah. You know, where he's just blowing things up and taking control, and you get the idea that so kind of oh thing is actually maybe a bit of an act. Um, mm. and then actually he can look after himself perfectly well, so he mightn't be at all worried about going in front of the, the um the audio, or he's he's giving it some Matt Lucas squeaking. Yeah. I might have a master plan to see behind the scenes, sort of thing, uh, like you're deliberately getting yourself captured. Uh-huh. Because with Ace, I feel like every time she gets captured and she talks to either um Susie Q, mm. or even when she's talking to Priscilla P, mm-hmm. it's finding out more about how they feel about living on like Terra Alpha under this yeah. regime. So yeah. you're getting like a little bit more plot exposition every time with those mm. like yeah. one to ones. While obviously the doctor's doing the usual doctor mm-hmm. thing, she's running around and being yeah. fantastic and like, oh, science lemonade. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's just I feel like she needs more oomph. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm not sure whether Nardole would just kind of like play it safe and be just like I'm going to do something amazing at my audition like it'd be a pre-planned thing rather mm. than oh I'm in distress mm. come rest yeah. me I'm inclined to think that he tried to escape with you know when, when Susie Q gives him the keys and stuff gives Ace the keys and says I just turn my back I think he'd go no right you're coming with me come on and motivate her mm. uh, mm. I go right we're getting out of this together we're going to find the doctor and maybe sort of bring her out of that funk she's in how about time ran Time ram? You couldn't do it in that old crock. Woof. Time ram. Londoners. The Doctor and Earl go to the pipes, yes. uh, which are full of crystallised sugar, which mm-hmm. may become significant later on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they meet uh, Wences and the pipe people. Yeah. Or not. Mm-hmm. Wences and the pipe people. They put out some great singles in the 60s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, what are they for? What are they for? I know that the indigenous inhabitants and they've been put down and so on, but we've got the idea that this is a, you know, a repressive regime anyway already. Mm. 
Because it's and, a GNT story and you're going to have monsters in it. You've got the candy man. Well, I thought, yeah. I thought that. Um, I thought, yeah. to myself, I thought to myself, is it a mandate to, you know, you've got to have monsters in it? And I thought, well, I've got the candy man. So, mm. well, maybe in the Capaldi can... story, they would have some killjoys just living down there trying to stay out of the way. Yeah. 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 It'd be like you've literally gone underground mm. to, yes. to, to, to escape yeah, nice, the regime. Nice. So well, it would be like refugees from. Yeah. yeah, the happiness mm-hmm. patrol that would make more sense. Underground yeah. misery pipes that's much better. Underground than misery pipes, yeah, <laughs> bloody misery and pipes. And you'd be able to relate to them, you'd, you'd be able to talk to them. You could get a performance yeah, out of it. I, I, because you can't understand what they're saying under those awful yeah, no. masks. You can't, you really can't. And that's kind of just bad production. Mm. You can't, you know, make out what characters are saying. And I know they're meant to have kind of chopped up alien speech, but still, they're no. like crap Ewoks. They are a bit like crap Ewoks because <laughs> yeah. the Ewoks are so great, yeah. <laughs> wow, <laughs> they were furry. They, they fought. To, to, to paraphrase Simon Pegg, the pipe people make Ewoks look like fucking Shaft. <laughs> so yeah, I've always had a bit of a problem with the pipe people. It didn't go away this time. I just thought, what are you for? Why are you, yeah. for? Mm. Why are you spending money on you know several of them? It could have been a prison. Could have spent money in a prison. prison. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. get get rid of the go kart. Get rid of the pipe people. Yeah. Bring, bring in the misery pipes and we're laughing <laughs> well we're not laughing are we that's not yeah. the point of misery pipes <laughs> so yeah he's moving on fast he then bumps into Trevor Sigma again yeah. and uh, talks him into taking him to Helen A which is a remarkable lack of security for the premiere <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah he just wanders in there um, yeah, I want to go and see her I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll ask a visiting bureaucrat who isn't even from here yeah. Presumably doesn't have much power yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming Capaldi's psychic papering him of course, more likely. yeah, of which course. would make more sense. Like, these are my credentials, I am here boss. to also do yeah. a census. Yeah. Oh, you're the Pope, okay, yeah. But it, he's, it, an inspector. He's, he's an inspector of census people, yeah, as an inspector <laughs> yeah. of the inspector, yeah, the mm. out bureaucrats and basically, yeah, head center, uh, yeah, yeah, nice, yeah, of course, it's like a pig, but yeah, yeah. Mm. Which makes more sense than than McCoy's just basically bamboozling him, although it yeah. is yeah. amusing to watch. It is, it yeah. is, yeah, absolutely. And mm-hmm. I do think, I, I, I often rail against McCoy's performance as the seventh doctor. I do think he's actually really quite good in having to patrol because he's being he's, quiet. A lot yeah. of times he's being quiet, and I think he excels when he's being quiet and reflective. Um, yeah. Or doing the kind of put-on clowning, as in the doctor's putting it on. Um, yeah. like, like in this scene, you know, he's, he's not having to do any of the great dramatic shouting that really you need to do to Christopher Eccleston. Uh, yeah, so he gets in to visit uh, with Helen and Joseph, and uh, he has quite a nice scene where he kind of confronts them. Helen's telling Trevor Sigma about how she's controlled the population. She's controlled the mm-hmm. population. Uh, she's controlled it down by 17% mm-hmm. using her own methods. Mm-hmm. Is, mm-hmm. Ah, nice. This is uh, kind of relevant today, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this has got resonances. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of a cost of living crisis, but no, she saw it out by getting mm-hmm. rid of the living. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Davros would approve. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and she's got her, yeah. pet, her pet Fifi as well, obviously. Yeah. Who gets introduced to her around this time. It's going to be CG. Is it going to be CG or is it going to be a puppet still? Think? I think it'd be CG. Yeah. I, I think it would be CG. Or, That's or why I was going for mocap, yeah. Helen Mirren. Oh, mocap, Helen Mirren. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Well, Andy Circus, if we've got the budget. I mean, <laughs> oh, if we've got, we haven't got the, we've got, we've got Diana Rigg and Chris Cole doing a scene at the moment. Yeah. We haven't got the budget for anything. I mean, I can forget myself. I actually um, didn't mind the puppet. For FIFA. I, I it's quite a good like puppet. It. Yeah. You know. it's, yeah. I like the bit when it's running. It's very That's clever. That little, <laughs> little feet. I'm doing the feet here. The listener can't appreciate this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We all did um, impersonations there. It was great listening. You'd have loved it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was lots of uh, like fake claw hands. Yeah. 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 Just, just yeah. imagine it. We, we gave good feet action as well. Yeah. <laughs> Bow time. Cool. I can buy affairs. So Fifi gets sent down the pipes. Fifi's uh, chasing again in the original oh, version, yeah. Ace down the pipes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just stunned by how loose it is to use Helen Mirren for mocap. That is expensive. <laughs> we are throwing money at this. This, this is this is billions. We got her in another role as well. She's she's doubling yeah, up. Yeah, like, she's she's, she's getting paid. Stop? She's getting paid one fee for two roles. Absolutely, Absolutely. that's a bargain. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Did, did we give her the acting role because you know to get her to do the mocap? You really want to do the mocap? But all right. All all right, you can say some words as well, Helen Mirren. Um, now chase this tennis ball while you're dressed in a skin tight suit. Then that's not the whole. That's why she's Fifi. <laughs> uh, that joke was, it was terrible. <laughs> the other thing that's going on at the moment is a lot of protests. We see the drones 
Mm. They're wandering around yeah. the streets. Uh, they don't get any lines, which is a shame. They're just extras. I think, I think the whole idea of combining the drones and the pipe people works completely. And you know, put most around occasionally. They come up yeah. and give their protest, and then they all disperse again. It is a terrible yeah. shame because most of the revolution. There's a revolution coming. Spoilers. Uh, yeah. Most of the revolution is the drones sort of rising up, but they they, mm. they don't speak. We don't really get to see their their point of view. You don't so. see the drones. Yeah. Like that, no. No. Yeah. It's kind of like the sunmakers. In yeah. that way, except in that you see the drones, you spend all your time with the drones and the people living underground. Huh. It's actually me like the sun makers. <laughs> huh. I mean, really a lot like the sun makers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> you've, you've got that same that you've got that same standard of kind of terrible mob acting, haven't you? Uh, <laughs> you can just uh, imagine the director uh, going, "All, all boo, boo." <laughs> Down with this sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Careful now. Careful now. So they're kind of protesting, but there's some snipers on the roof. The snipers are there to kind of shoot them mm. when they come out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we get probably the most famous scene from the story where the doctor just goes up there. And today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Oh, Chuckle Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> they have got to be in the Happiness Patrol. The Chuckle Brothers. Just <laughs> pressing the gun to each hold, other. Hold on, yeah. hold on. I'm just, I'm just going to check when. Um, Oh, is it Barry or Paul who's dead? I feel really bad. I can't remember which one it is. Barry, I think. Hold on, I've googled. Um, he was still alive. Barry, Barry died in 2018. He's still alive. Yeah. He's still yeah. alive. Got him. Excellent. Right. Oh, the, chuckle, the Chuckle Brothers. The there. Chuckle Brothers. And Peter Capaldi doing a scene. <laughs> Loving it. And, and Paulie's like, there what? talking to the Chuckle Brothers, going, "Go oh, on then." Dick my life. Well, one of the most, one of the most to important me, scenes to you. in the, high, <laughs> yeah. the entire thing. Well, all right, well, then, yeah, yeah. Put the gun together. Yeah, we'll be like, yeah, you shoot him. No, oh, no, you shoot him. I know, you shoot him. I shot the last one. You shoot him. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. This <laughs> kind of take the pathos away from that scene, though. <laughs> it, does. <laughs> it does, but it does. But we, we've got Ada Diana Rick. Good, you know. good, good casting. Yeah. Good casting. Actually, actually, I've never seen. Did, did they do any straight acting on. Did, were they in a Jonathan Creek or something? Or was one of them in a Jonathan Creek? Um, yeah. They might have been yeah, able maybe. to simply play it straight. Yeah. Um, they might have been perfectly capable of straight acting. I don't know. Um, yeah. Could have been well, interesting to try. That. I mean, they'd yeah. be pretty old by that point as well. Yeah. Paul's quite a lot younger, though, isn't he? And if the Happiness Patrol... Yeah, but yeah, but if, so, yeah. Patrol, if, we're, if we're skewing young, the Happiness Patrol, the fact that the snipers are old males, yeah. mm. you know, it, again, just text, you know, sketch something in about that society. Mm. I'm not sure what, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the chuckle brothers. This is a really weird version of this scene. Uh, yeah. So... <laughs> Paulie looks him in the eye and says, go on in, take my life. You like guns, don't you? Yeah. Um, is that your Capaldi impersonation? Sort of, yeah. I can't that was think. remarkable. <laughs> That's what you said last time. Hey, look, it's a dance like better than what anything <laughs> I, I can do. Right. So, I mean, yeah. take it. It's fine. Fucking robots. <laughs> Fucking robots. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he's actually Scottish. Um, <laughs> you guys do you. Uh, yeah, so um, he talks him down. Mm. We don't see him again. It's just one scene. But it's quite no. a good scene. It's a great scene, yeah. yeah. And probably, I mean, Svester's best scene, I would say, as the Doctor. I, mean, yeah, it's, 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 mm, I, I honestly think his best scene is that one in Remembrance where he's talking to the cafe owner. I oh, love good, that scene. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I love it. I think he's magnificent in that. Mm. It's sweet and it's gentle and it's... You know, he really has the weight of the universe upon his shoulders. You feel he's manipulating all these things. He just needs a break. Talk to this guy about, you know, this employer having twins and things. I'd love yeah. that so I've kind of been avoiding the subplot with the companion because it doesn't really go anywhere. No. Uh, well, we'll be cutting it in our version, clearly. We'll, you know, we'll yeah, on. yeah. We'll perhaps just pop back in on our door occasionally. He's basically, uh, he drops in on Susan Q. Having escaped. He comes uh, back again, does he? Kind of escape and get away again. Uh, there's a bit where they blow up Fifi, which I think we better drop because Fifi kind of gets blown up in the next episode as well. Well, didn't, um, we, didn't, yeah. we, didn't we have Nardo and Suzy Q escaping together in our version? They try and escape. They get captured again. They're nearly right. executed. Uh, the Doctor right. has to drop in on the Candyman and stop the execution, mm-hmm. uh, which he does by freeing the Candyman. Mm-hmm. The Candyman stops the execution, but he's got some more lemonade from somewhere. And he yeah, the down. candy man he's, really stupid in that scene. Yeah. He's got two massive canisters, like fire. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're not they're not hydrants. That's what you have on the I street. Was say What's no, extinguishers. Fire. He's got yeah. two mini fire extinguishers, not yeah. like um, the kind of little fizzy ones you get in a bar. 
I, I watched this scene with McCoy and I was just like, where on earth were you hiding those? How deep are your pockets? He's got big pockets. So He's from a it's very deep, deep that pockets. Can build I know. I mean, it makes sense. You know, it's a bit Mary Poppins. Transcendental pockets, yeah. Yeah. His yeah. trousers are made to incorporate ferrets. Yeah. 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 No. Oh, I've heard. Good. <laughs> That's what I've heard, anyway. Yeah, always <laughs> always carry two fire extinguishers with you at all times. I don't, I don't imagine the Capaldi's trousers are made to accommodate ferrets. No. no. <laughs> I hope not. Fucking ferrets. I wouldn't like to think of them. <laughs> Maybe it's one of those stories where he's wearing... Because occasionally Capaldi does wear big, quite baggy trousers. So he, I mean, he does... There's checky ones. Yeah. Checky ones. Yeah, he's what can Capaldi do with a, with a can? You trousers. just get, like, a can of tonic water out and just <laughs> chuck it. Yeah. He's, he's got a bottle opener and, a, and like a little t- mini Schweppes and he's just oh, like, yeah, just exactly. them. Maybe actually have a little mini bar in his coat. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> it's a Capaldi's Time Lord mini bar <laughs> in a half shell. He's got a guitar in there as well. You know, you can get that out. Mm. Yeah. It gets his guitar out, plays a few chords. Yeah. Spare, a spare pair of sunglasses. Yeah. 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 Him. Sorry. I've always wanted to see that done properly. Hey, we haven't cast the candy man. It's just That's a guy a in a suit, isn't he? Oh, he's a pig, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think David John Pope does really well, especially considering the suit. He turns up in Star Cops the year after as a human. Um, Maybe the they... candy man would be a woman as well. Maybe it'd be the candy woman. I'm sure how that work. Um... <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know how he would <laughs> emphasise the fact that the candy man That's... was a woman. I don't really want to go there, to be <laughs> As far as I know, the candy man's ended up being a kind of squidgy pig at the moment. Yeah. Well, I'm happy yeah. with the squidgy pig. Yeah. Well, squidgy pig. No. Can we quote you on that, Pat? Yeah. Well, uh, Bye. Barry, I'm happy with the squidgy pig, Williams. Anytime you like. Yeah, yeah. Radio. Candy man is played by Pepper Pig. <laughs> right. Excellent. It's, it's just, it's, Excellent. It's just, it just fits. Cool. Cool. He's got the really squeaky voice at the same time. <laughs> I mean, that could be quite terrifying if it looks quite a cuddly, nice mm. figure and then yeah. it's just a psycho. Yeah. It does, you know, like, yeah. like Chucky and things like that. That horror mm. trope. Yeah. Um, eat the meat. Eat the meat. Yeah, yeah. Eat the meat. Beep. The meat. So, or not. So, mm. so, where are we? So, there's some kind of loophole which Trevor Sigma points out. This is the only time that Trevor Sigma affects the plot, but he points out <laughs> they can't now be executed because the execution's failed. Mm-hmm. So, they have to audition for the Happiness Patrol instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, which kind of brings us into episode three. We're kind of getting there. I wasn't expecting there to be like a double jeopardy style of, um, well, this is the plot device now. We, we, we've we tried you once and you got off, so we can't try you again. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, it's mm. not choice that one. It, it, mm. Yeah, it's laboured. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can I just say, since we're on episode three, mm. I think episode three is a real dog's dinner. It's kind of, it's very rushed. To me, it feels as if this has been a four-parter and they've crammed three and four into one episode. That's it, just... Yeah, it's not sophisticated. I mean, at the point where the yeah. doctor decides to bring down the regime, he basically uses violence. This is something really, yeah. how you could describe it. It's quite funny as well because uh, the way they structure it, Fifi gets blown up in part two. In part yeah. three, you see Fifi in one scene with some bandages on. Mm. And Helena takes the bandages off and sends Fifi back down the pipes. And it's like, no, keep one of them. You know, do it once. Re, re, rejuvenate really quickly. Yeah, really. well, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not you great. Know, is it a sticker axe? Or is it a sticker axe? No, sticker axes are much later. No, it's, uh, it's, stick, later. it's a sticker axe. Yeah. Because yeah. I got excited yeah. and thought, sticker axe? <laughs> like, oh, no, 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 this is sticker axe. It's like, fine, okay. I'll sit down. I wonder if Russell T. Davis was really knackered when he was writing Christmas Invasion. I go, I know, I'm going to watch The Happiness <laughs> Patrol. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll change a letter. No one's going to. Really tired. Yeah. Just like. Couple of gins in. This is sucker ox. Doctor Who fans won't notice that. They don't pay really close attention to it on an obsessive level. It'll be fine. If Helen has got a pet sucker ox, that's quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the doctor is hanging around outside the forum. He's waiting for Susan Q and Nardole, I guess. Yeah, to yeah. turn up for oh. their audition. It's a very sophisticated McCoy scene. He's there kind of singing into his microphone and stuff, isn't he? Um, yeah, yeah. Time goes um, by. Yeah. And they I do like thing. that. I like that. So, it's a nice scene. Um, Probably would whip his guitar over, I suppose, wouldn't he? He would. Yeah. Mm. He would. Yeah, he would. Yeah. His mini bar. I don't know where he keeps it. Yeah. His his bar, yeah. With his fire extinguishers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but he hasn't got the ferrets, so there's space. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Happiness Patrol are going to arrest them all when the drones turn up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But he's kind of, he's already communicated with them and they're trying to stop, but everybody acts happy. They're all really happy. Yeah. 
So the Happiness Patrol can't shoot them because they're happy. Yeah, we are missing the scene where the Doctor meets the drones face to face and inspires them. There's a big speech. Uh, yeah. And goes, right, come on, time to throw off the train. That's yeah, when the Doctor does that speech. This is the problem with the drones not having any, any speaking parts. It's got, yeah, yeah, it's very. Yeah. I think Earl maybe talked to him at some point for him, but it's very strange. Yeah. That's what I mean about it being rushed. It, it does feel like there's, there's vital a chunk missing. elements mm. missing of it. Yeah. Mm. Well, if our pipe people are killjoys and mm. the killjoys are also our um, drones, yeah. Yeah. then technically Ace and, no, I'm sorry, Nardle, not Ace. Um, and the doctor could have already like rallied the troops a little bit from their mm. quite frankly exhaustive running through the pipes by this point. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're called misery pipes for a reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's combine all that and actually have a scene where they talk to them. Mm. Yeah, and say, look, where, yeah. Where, where you see the oppressed masses and, and stop yeah. being happy and they can't yeah. do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, uh, mind you, if you were start, if, you, if you were actually there, would you not turn to them and go, did that not occur to you? <laughs> it's fairly obvious. Yeah. You know, rise but, up. But I, I know you like being miserable, but just fake a smile and you don't get shot in the heat. <laughs> you can take the smile off afterwards. There's silly people on terror, Alpha. Yeah. Well, you know, the patrol... overall intellect level, I'm not impressed by. <laughs> the Happiness Patrol now look miserable because they can't shoot anyone. And so Priscilla P turns on them. Mm-hmm. That's proper psycho on them. And she's ready to shoot them. Mm-hmm. So the doctor gets away again. Yeah, and it would be great if she did. Mm. Kind of like the Daleks. If, if a Dalek is impure, mm. it's exterminated. You know, yeah. she, can't, she can't... No, you're not towing the party line, literally. Yeah. Maybe that's what the thing in the cell is. Maybe, that, maybe that's the party line. <laughs> well, the hazard line on the floor. The hazard line, yeah. That bit hazard the hazard line the is literally the party line. It's the party line, and you've got to tow it. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't need to tow a bit of tape. You pick it up and carry it. I mean, you know, they weigh nothing. They're not clever on Terror Alpha. I come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not really. We get the scenes uh, where Helena is putting Fifi back in the pipes now. Mm-hmm. Fifi's definitely, definitely, definitely going to kill him. But they're running away through the pipes, and then uh, the doctor gets Earl. Earl's turned up. This is, this is the scene where Earl just pops up. Like, Hello. <laughs> With his harmonica. With his harmonica, ready to go. <laughs> maybe Earl's a time agent. Maybe, you know, maybe the harmonica's his travel device. And he's, just, he's just there to help the doctor along. He just <laughs> phases in. Yeah, it, yeah. It, would make, in. it would make more sense yeah. if he's yeah. someone kind of. Captain Jack esque, yeah, flipping yeah. in and out with his jazz agent. bracelet. Jazz agent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe Earl Sigma is the timeless child. No, I don't want to go there. Um, no, no, Baz. <laughs> oh, no, please. Why are you right there? No, please. Where's what you do? No, timeless child. <laughs> the doctor persuades Earl to play the right note on his harmonica, which releases all the sugar, which crushes Fifi mm-hmm. in a big pile of sugar. You know, Fifi. Hella <laughs> in the mocap, yeah. Fifi's yep. not very big in the original. No. I mean, you think uh, of two or three people, you could probably, I know teeth and all that sort of thing, but it's like, not very big. No, I'm assuming uh, it's uh, it's like a, um, it's a Blofeld trope, isn't it? It's the whole kind of something to sit on, on yeah. Helena's lap mm. and yeah, stroke. Yeah. So it's like um, freaking cat in um, Danger Mouse with Baron Greenback and he's yes. got his cat. Mm. Yes, and yes. then there's also uh, the claw in Inspector Gadget, where he's got his cat yeah. as well. I, yeah. I feel like um, Fifi is is just purely a, I'm truly, truly quite evil. Yeah. Gonna, broke gonna, my yeah. menacing it, pet. It stroke my sticker yeah. 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 I love your ankles. Mate, yeah. But would yeah. you send it down the... Yeah, bearing in mind, you've got the heavily armed Trouble Brothers. I'd send them. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe Fifi's like the uh, rabbit in the Holy Grail. You know, everything. Oh! <laughs> Little cute Fifi, you know, you throw <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'd love it if Capaldi said that and backed off. That'd be Oh, please be quiet. While this is all going on, the drones are doing all the rioting and they're destroying the factories. So they're sort yeah. of chewing through these factories. We might actually see some of this. this yeah. Factory. Cool factories. Yeah. That would yeah. be nice. That would yeah. be nice. Yeah. 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 Maybe some explosions and some fire. Possibly yeah. an explosion and some fire. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Little things like that to it's symbolize kind of sell the, the idea. revolution yeah. happening. Yeah. 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 Flash the world out. Yeah. Smash the machinery. It's a uh, world hard. Um, <laughs> It really is one of those like, Doctor Who examples of, yeah, this is all happening off camera and it must be really great. Yeah. But you ain't going to see it. 
No. Yeah. Because yeah. we because no. we spent all the money on the Daleks and the Cybermen this season. Yeah, we get to see the Candyman's end. Um, mm-hmm. The Doctor goes Wait, in there. Do you want to rephrase that? Yeah. <laughs> Sure, but dib dab, I mean, yeah. it happens really quickly and without yeah. kind of fanfare because I was expecting a bit more of a kind of like, yeah, uh, wicked witch of the obviously like, um, Wizard of Oz. So, like, I'm yeah. melting, I'm melting. Yeah. It's just like, now it's just down a shoot, whoosh, yeah. there you go, yeah. skeleton. Yeah. Well, apparently, yeah. they, they shot the scene, they shot the scene where the candy man gets melted, but it was that hmm. poor that they didn't use it. <laughs> Doctor Who in I mean, 1988. It was that considering poor. what's left in, that has to have been <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Did they really? I mean, there is footage existing from this story. There's, there's a good chunk of footage, but I don't remember seeing it. I mean, seeing. I'm, the I'm basically. I've, I've read Car- Andrew Cartman's book again, so this is right. his recollection, not mine. Mm. But uh, yeah, apparently so. Yeah, it is. It, it, it comes up to Paul's dog dinner comments. It's another one of those things that is kind of thrown in and rushed. It just, it just seems yeah. that too much time is given to unimportant things in this story. Yeah. It moves um, quite quickly, I think. It's just, it's just maybe slightly oh, yeah. too much going on. Um, it doesn't bore. You know, mm, you get no long yeah. years of tedium. No. <laughs> uh, oh, I tell you what's not tedious. Helen A's mm-hmm. wallpaper. It's like tadpoles. <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered, sorry. Because I knew we were talking about decor earlier and how it could do a little bit of a mm-hmm. judging. And I, mm-hmm. I actually, when, whenever we're in Helen A's office, I was actually just thinking, that is an interesting wallpaper choice. <laughs> I'm assuming it's supposed to be like commas. I assume it was lots, commas, lots of but, commas. But, but, but yeah. why is she They look like tadpoles. I don't she know. She has smiles and ha 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 things. And, and yeah. you know, it's a very odd choice. Now, see, that, that's what this podcast is missing. We've never ever discussed the wallpaper before. <laughs> Well, I'm glad yeah, that I have raised this. Yeah, that raised the bar. Yeah. Valuable. Valuable. Yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah. Worth the guest appearance. At home. <laughs> have you seen the tapholes on our wall, though? No. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, are they talking to, Yeah, I think, I, think, I, I, I think they're commas. But, like, talking of things that have just kind of been skipped over and overseen, mm. like, mm. obviously, this is like a. Um, a pastiche of Thatcher's Britain mm, mm. and kind of like almost like a winter of discontent type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't really, it's shown, but it doesn't really focus on it. It's, it's very matriarchal, the society, like the main soldiers yeah. are women. Mm. Um, and most of the male characters aren't that bright. No. Well, they're very yeah. henpecked. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is unusual and refreshing for something yeah. in the 80s. Absolutely. Um, but I'm not sure, other than the fact that obviously Dame Diane's going to be absolutely slaying it as mm-hmm. Helen A, mm-hmm. how we'd kind of put a fresh twist on that as a Capaldi app. Because otherwise it's just kind of happening. Yeah, it's a bit of a departure in the McCoy era. They do this quite a lot. And they started mm. in Paradise Towers, I think, with the sort of the Kangs. When you get Cartman, yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. He's still he he thinking about that a bit more. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. In a way that I don't think any script editor before then really had done. No. I, I can't think of a way you'd spin it. Uh, well, you, maybe you, you probably wouldn't. You probably, I think the key thing it would be the central concept because we're only doing a forty-five minute episode. Mm. You know, yeah, oh, yeah we're doing a one-off or an hour. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a Christmas special, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Jolliness yeah. patrol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it, it, interesting, also that the, the you know the only two clever male characters in it are the Doctor and Nardole. Well, I mean, yeah. Joseph C mm-hmm. turns out to be quite clever. Him and Gil well, yeah, they yeah. Kind of, they yeah. get together at this point, and then they're True. like, yeah. "Okay, we're going to nick off in the shuttle." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, incredibly sensible. Yeah, Helen. Uh, yeah, have a nice time. Fun, really... fun fact: the shuttle model, for all of two seconds, the original is built entirely out of parts of a Y-wing fighter kit. <laughs> yeah. Just all turned upside down and changed around a bit so that George Lucas doesn't sue. That's why you keep me around for this. That's why we keep you around. For, for, hey. yeah. <laughs> Toy. Fascination like that. <laughs> so it's all falling apart, really. The Doctor and the rest of the revolutionaries, they arrest Priscilla. Uh, they arrest Daisy. Mm-hmm. And then the Doctor goes in to confront Helen. Helen's just gone through the streets at this point. She's running down the street with her suitcase. <laughs> she's heading to the airport she's like right I'm going to get the next flight to you know Antigua wherever it is um, Terra Beta I don't think that our dame is running down the street I think she's strolling stylishly with a, with a suitcase Dinah Rig would be yeah. Yeah. yeah it would be 
at this point. She doesn't need yeah. to. Yeah, she knows yeah. the gig is up, but she's still maintaining the facade. Kind, kind of, I think she'd play a little bit like Jacqueline Pierce plays Serverland, actually. That kind of enjoying every minute of it, you know, a bit kind of oh, darling before killing someone. Um, yeah. Well, this is a problem with taking off Theresa May is that she's got no charisma, so you can't really yeah. do that at all. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah. Let's, 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 mm. let's, let's not take off Theresa May. <laughs> can she not be leaving in the go kart? <laughs> <laughs> Very on slowly. Segways. Uh, on the segways. On the segways. On the segways. I had a rig on the, the segways. Doctor slowly walks up behind me. I would pay good money to have seen that. Me too. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Ten years from now, deep fake technology will make all this possible. Mm. <laughs> so they have another really nice dialogue scene. It's really nicely written, actually. Yep. Uh, where the doctors yep. talk about happiness and sadness, the two sides mm-hmm. of the same coin. Mm-hmm. Helen is not having just it. creaming this scene. I mean, he's just walking off with it. Yeah. 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 He's, 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 he's doing this amazing. Blow us away, wouldn't he? Yeah. 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 Amazing. Um, yeah. And Helen's not having it. She's just saying, no, people mm-hmm. are not happy. They're just weak. And then mm-hmm. uh, she spots Fifi. Fifi's made it out of the pipes and has come here to expire. Mm-hmm. And she's just weeping over Fifi. Um, and I thought Helen really sold this with a mocap as well. You know, she really sold this people <laughs> dying and desperately trying to <laughs> get back to Diana. Just shows the range, yeah, massive absolutely. range. Yeah. yeah, and a shout out for Sheila Hancock, who's just um, really, yeah. really good. It was great. Mm. She was good. The cast are great in the Happiness Patrol. It's a really yeah. strong cast. Yeah, and like I said at the beginning, none of them do anything wrong. I, I really think it's the design that slays it. Mm. Uh, that's kind of the end, really. Uh, Happiness kind of Patrol the uh, at the uh, they they've been captured. They've taken off the wigs, and they're kind of yeah. painting everything yeah. sort of battleship grey again. Mm-hmm. I, d- I do like that they take off their wigs because uh, I, d- I don't like... All except Susan Q, who's still yeah. doled up to the night. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't like the, the <laughs> idea that that is actually their hair. <laughs> I love mm. it when they take their wigs off. Yeah. Mm. kind of shows that it's the uniform that they have to wear to conform, yeah. which is yeah. quite nice as a kind of a visual Absolutely. element. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The core of it's yeah. over, yeah. Like the makeup. Mm. Yeah, you see behind the facade, and there's sort of there's a scene yeah. with Daisy and Priscilla kind of sort of bitching with each other. And, and then the Doctor and... Nardole, uh, said goodbye to Susan, Q and Earl, who I know is seem to quite like each other. They kind of, they put their mm-hmm. on each other mm-hmm. walk off mm-hmm. into the sunset together. Is there a little bit of a hint of a, a romance there? You know what? I wouldn't do any of this scene. I think it's no. so much more powerful ending on, you know, when, it, when Sylvester says something like, it is done and you get that nice pullback of, of Helen crying over Fifi. End credits. Mm. Yeah. You know, we know we know the problem is solved. We know the planet's going to heal now. Blah blah. blah. We don't need. I've always found that last scene a bit of a kind of. Yeah. So I think you probably get that in, in the Capaldi version. Ensplainment. 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 Are we ensplaining? We, yeah, well, we got to the end of the episode. Yeah, happiness will prevail. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, it's, it's clean. So this is basically where we decide is mm. our version better or worse than the original one. Mm. I think we really don't have to struggle on this. <laughs> um, I think ours is better. I mean, it's vastly yeah. better. It's vastly better. It's got Diana Rick. Not that there's anything wrong with the cast in the original, but... Yeah, you know, nowhere else do you see Diana Rigg and yeah. Peter Capaldi, you know, biting chunks out of each other, do you? It's just doing it on location makes so much difference. Um, yeah, it is yeah. the design that lets it down, and and, uh, and casting the Chuckle Brothers, obviously. I mean, you know, <laughs> yes, um, <yeah>. you know. <laughs> seminal, seminal. I love how we went from Ant and Dex to Chuckle Brothers like <laughs> like that. It was so quick. <laughs> Ant and Dec seem to crop up a lot as well. Whenever there's any kind of double act, you go, oh, Ant and Dec, are they the right age? And the kids are the most right <laughs> fine. Can't yeah. use them. <laughs> So yeah, we're all in completely in agreement that that's uh, yeah. yeah. I think it would be it would be a good one. version with Capaldi era production values. I think it'd be amazing. I think it would be superb. You know, the idea of it really. Once you have to cut, you want to cut out all the well, the pipe people for a start, and, and yeah. you know, the, the, the running away and being captured and running away again, and all, all that bit, which is rather padded. Mm. Which is odd for a three parter. Yeah. Actually, the three parters are usually tighter than that. But yeah. the central concept's a lovely one. It's a you know nice science fiction concept, nice Doctor Who concept. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's going to be great, man. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm I'm aware that there are people that really love the original. I mean, mm. love it. Yeah, and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that if that's no. if that's the style of thing 
that you particularly like, but I think we're with the, the well, the three of us gentlemen here are all quite old school, and to us, it, it did look just a bit old. We're all just old, <laughs> it, did, it didn't look like what we were used to, and uh, I think. It didn't it really looked, do it for it us. Kind no. of, it kind of watching again. I kind of, I kept thinking it looks a bit fan film. Mm, um, yeah. in, in production values, obviously not VHS cameras and stuff. It's just so yeah. cheap. I don't think it's ever looked cheaper. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, even the web planet, which is extraordinarily stagey, I somehow find more convincing. Yeah. Um, I think the cheapest thing for me, and this is a weird thing to pick up on, is the the candy liquid going through the pipes. <laughs> yeah. like, it's, like in certain shots you can see it's actual liquid and then the mm-hmm. other ones it looks like they've almost really badly like chroma keyed it like green screen uh, like it doesn't really well, look like it's in the pipes it was pe- and, well, it was late 80s kind of quantel mm, that stuck out like a sore thumb to me and was yeah. really annoying is that, it, is it when you see the big shot, long shots of the kitchen, and you see the, the yeah, the, the, yeah, mm. it's like when they, when they when the, they pull yeah. the uh, the levers and mm-hmm. you start seeing it going around, you can yeah. physically see it going through the pipe that's behind yeah. the levers. Yeah, mm-hmm. but they yeah. kind of pull out to like almost a ceiling wide. wide. Yeah, and yeah, it it jars. But it's because um, it's because the top half's the model. Yeah. 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 None of those cogs and stuff in the background look convincing. They, no, yeah. no, but um. Yeah, I kind of forgive effects because effects are always limited by their time. Mm. Set design, though, I don't forgive. There's no mm. reason why the sets should have looked that cheap and shoddy, really, I think. But but there we are. There we are. You do get people that say that it was deliberate, don't you, to, to, to look like a facade, but I, I'm not buying that, really. I mean, I, I, I agree. I you know I know people who love it. Uh, love yeah. Having control. Great. Yeah. Excellent. Fine. You know. If they got something, it's just, yeah. I wish we had the Capaldi version. Yeah. Shall I roll the numbers for next Okay. Time? Yay. Roll the numbers. Roll. Doctor is Peter Davison. Oh. Um, story is story number 118. 118. <laughs> What runs to that guy? Yeah. It is. It's not one of his, is it? it oh, I love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does that happen? You accidentally get a doctor yeah, and it's up Kinder. Yeah, it is. Kinder. Peter Davison and Kinder. <laughs> that's going to be a stretch. So, Why? That's impossible. <laughs> roll again. Roll again. Uh, oh, I don't know. We haven't had a lot of Davison, have we? I'll re-roll the story. Okay. Here we go. 38. Oh, Ooh, that's hard. Trout, I think. Trout, maybe. Early trout. 38 is the is abominable snowman. Abominable snowman. Oh. Ah, Peter Davis. That could be Peter Davis. Snowman. It's another missing one. Fun times. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hold on. My brain's doing that thing with my mine cart that's going back and coming forward. I don't understand that last sentence you said. <laughs> we, no, it's a bit. No, it's means. a bit like it's a bit like you know, like Sherlock's got a mind palace. Right. All my oh. all my random retro tat is in such disarray in my head. <laughs> oh, I've got it. I've got it. Bernard Breslau. There we go. That's all I needed. Yes. That was the mm-hmm. name. He's an abominable snowman, isn't he? In the missing episode. No, he's a nice warrior. No. He's a nice warrior. <laughs> Bollocks. Wrong the way around. The, the very next story, though, you're in the right mm. ballpark. Um, it's so similar. I was thinking, yeah, oh, you're right. No, you're not. That's right. Yeah, no, yeah. no. <laughs> See what I mean? It's it's the the minecart sometimes mine works. Cart, got it. Yep. it doesn't yep. always work. My yeah. subconscious is stronger at sometimes than my actual conscious mind. It's like, I, <laughs> I want to say it's so and so. And someone goes, yeah, that's right. And I was like, is it? <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah. So, jumble. Jumble. That's oh. what happens when I've been brought up on a lot of 60s and 70s freaking <laughs> British retro <laughs> cult TV and comedy. It's just a mess in my head. No, it's quite. It's like I'll, I'll join in on conversations like this. Like, uh, like I, I don't know many people my age that he suddenly went, "Oh, let's cast Brian Murphy." I'll be like, "Yes, George and Mildred, that's a Indeed. great idea." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, everyone's yeah. just like, "What?" Yeah. Uh, no. it's one of the reasons I thought you fit in with this because it, it does require a bit of a knowledge of mm. actors around that yeah, yeah. time. You know, I mean, for the next story. Okay, we're going to start thinking sixties. Peter Davison's a child. I oh, know we're not doing it that way around. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's, um, it's not people in the eighties. It's, it's people yeah, yeah. in the eighties. Mm. Of course, it is. Yeah. Yes, yes, we're in the eighties. But yeah, and, and that that's really you know useful because these actors just turned up in everything all the time. They'd be doing Doctor Who one week and then doing a sitcom the next week and then doing 
Z card it's or what bill I or whatever. call um I personally call Peter Bowles syndrome because mm-hmm. yeah. like Peter Bowles freaking prolific actor yeah. he's yeah. in pretty yeah. much bloody everything yeah. over a space of like 20 30 years mm-hmm. uh, he's in one of my favorite Avengers stories from the color period of of um mm-hmm. Dame Diner. Yeah. yeah and just again range can do yeah. menacing yeah. can do comedy yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean from every, like if you take from that to something like to the man are born absolutely yeah. and you're yeah. just like oh. absolutely yeah yeah. He's playing a thug in the prisoner not long before the event mm. as well, around the same time, with a moustache. Yeah. That, that, that yeah. Takes... It's, it's like there were 10 <laughs> actors in the UK sometime yeah. between the 60s really and the 80s. Sometimes. And they just like constantly got recast. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Then he's right, still so... working and turns up in the Sarah Jane Adventures. So, yeah. mm. I was going to say, yeah. Doctor Who has he? But, but uh, I haven't seen all the Sarah Jane still. I must, I must, I must uh, yeah, I like them. Okay, so um, that was another edition of Time Ram. That's that's how many down now? Nineteen. 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 And, uh, 19. So that leaves how many? A lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. We've got a long way to go, but we're nearly at twenty stories. Um, and and our twentieth our, our story will be Peter Davison's The Abominable Snowmen, which should be fun. So, thank you, listener, for listening. We do love you. I'm going to send you another daffodil after this. Thank you so much, Melanie, for coming along. Uh, I've um, really enjoyed this. Thank you for having me. Excellent, excellent. Yes, you come out and do another one, one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Um, as long as there's no Bonnie Langford, I'm in. Right. Well, that's that's, that's a rule then. Well, Bonnie Langford won't. That's my that's that's, that's my one ruling. I'm that's just a stipulation. Like, nah. We can we can yeah. live with that. We can live. Yeah. With that. We can't guarantee that we get Sylvester McCoy disturbingly often on this program. Oh. I just, I just just give me ace tons. That's fine. It's <laughs> fine. Mm. It's all right if we get a Sylvester McCoy with Mel, we'll just not invite Melanie to that. We'll just yeah. Make it that one. We'll make it a different. One. You can't cross yeah. the Mel's. <laughs> yeah, don't exactly. cross the Mel's. Don't yeah. cross the Mel's. Of course, yeah. it's a paradox. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're really my head's now going. Don't cross the Mel's. The achy breaky Mel's, which is <laughs> odd. just don't think she'd understand. I don't think she would. I don't understand. No. Yeah, yeah. Do any of us? And that's time round, listener. Yeah. None of us understand. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> We'd like to give our thanks to Ben Jones for composing our music. Come and find us on the internet. Use the hashtag TimeRam on Twitter, then you'll find us. We're also on there as individuals. Baz is at BazTimeRam. I'm at Rupert Boop, and Paul is at PaulFerry8. We're on Facebook. We're on Patreon. And another way to support the show is to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you download your podcasts from. I will send you that picture of Peter Davison Easter egg on, on, yes, on Twitter. Yes, please. I, uh, I... So you can see this majesty. <laughs> just send it to me with no, with no context. And everyone will be just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean post it? I might, you, you post know? it. Oh, post fine. it and just tag me. And everyone, everyone will be just like. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Not a problem. There we go. That's a conversation starter on Twitter. <laughs>